wherever you are. As we are about to commemorate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, I want us to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14. This is the account where Paul is addressing the notion that Jesus Christ is not risen or did not resurrect, or there's no such thing as a resurrection. I truly believe this is the cornerstone of uh, Christian belief, our belief system, that Jesus Christ is risen. Amen, family. So now, let us look at 1 Corinthians 15 verse 14. It reads as follows. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. So is your faith. So family, Paul says, if Christ is not risen, our preaching, Sunday after Sunday, weekend after weekend, is vain, is null void. So now, if Christ is not risen, why are we here? Why are we teaching this gospel if he is not risen? So the notion that he's not risen, it's merely a ploy from the evil one to plant doubt. Because now once he can pl plant doubt in us, plant that seed of doubt, therefore our faith becomes useless. Because now preaching, how will they hear unless there's a preacher who has been sent? And once again, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And now by preaching, that's when we plant seeds of faith in people. So once again, if we, if we do not uh, believe, if we do not have faith, how can we please God? Without faith, without faith, we cannot please God. So now, as we're looking at that, I want us to consider some few factors. One, what was Paul preaching? What, uh, something to consider. And how do we make it applicable this uh, Good Friday that is upon us? Now, Paul went around preaching that Christ is the Son of God, or is the Son of God, and He is the Messiah that they had been waiting for. Now, if He is not risen, this would be uh, null and void. Now, consider this. Christ, in the book of John, when they asked them, uh, they were interrogating him, the Pharisees, and he said to them, I will destroy the te this temple, and in three days I will raise it. So now the Pharisees were like, Ah, who do you think you are? It took so many years to build this structure. So now Christ was referring to the, his temple, not the synagogue. So now, if he is not risen, that type of preaching would have made, made him to be a liar, Christ. Because he went around telling people that he will raise the temple in three days. So now, if he was a liar, that means it would disqualify him from being an acceptable sacrifice that uh, God wanted. Because he was ultimately the acceptable sacrifice, you know? So if he was a liar, well, I think that would have disqualified him from being an unblemished lamb of God. That's what he proclaimed. So the second one would be, he is the atonement of our sins. So Paul went around preaching that, that Christ is the atonement of our sins. What do we mean? So now Hebrews tells us, uh, 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So Christ had to shed his blood so that we can be forgiven for our sins or the sin that Adam and Eve brought upon us. So once he died, of course, he went into the tomb and he resurrected. After he resurrected, he took his blood, every drop that was spilled, and went to, went to heaven with it. And with it, he presented it uh, to the Father, and heaven was cleansed, and we were cleansed, and we were made clean before the Father with the blood of Christ. So hence is the atonement of our sins. In the Old Testament, they would use the blood of bulls and goats, and that was just temporary. But with the blood of Christ, it's a permanent sacrifice that we know that all our sins have been washed away, have been blotted out. The scripture says, come to me, let us risen. Though your sins may be as red as crimson, I will make them white as snow. So family, as we continue. So now, after he washed us, now we are clean, right? Now remember, after Adam and Eve did what they did, uh, the Holy Spirit departed. Now we are clean once again because of the blood of Christ. 
we are now the temple that the Holy Spirit comes and lives in us. He indwells us now. So you see the importance of Him rising up, going to heaven, cleansing us. Now the Holy Spirit dwells in us. So the very same power that resurrected Christ from the tomb dwells in us. So we have the same amount of power. I think Christ says after He rose uh, Lazarus from the dead, He says, you will do greater things. Could it be we are the ones limiting the Holy Spirit in terms of His move, the changes that He wants to bring about on this planet? So now, that, that's the other thing that we receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit. Number, uh, number four, if I were to call it number four, then we were restored as the rightful rulers of planet Earth, if I can put it that way. Because remember, Man was created to rule, dominion. Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27. Man was created to dominate the earth. So now because we had fallen, we had fallen from that uh, responsibility. So now because of his resurrection, we have been restored as the rightful rulers. So let me clarify. I know 1 Corinthians 4, 4, Paul says, The God of this world has blinded them so that they may not receive or hear the word of God. Right? The gospel. So he says world, the, the cosmos, the God of this cosmos, that's the system that operates in this world. Now we are the rightful rulers, the dominion of the earth. So those are two different things. He says the earth belongs to the son of man. That's uh, David in Psalms. He says earth belongs to the son of man. But the world is the system. World is the system by which the earth operates in. So we rule the earth, the soil, the anything, the sky, go to Genesis. So as we continue, we were restored the rightful rulers and we were granted eternal life. Genesis 3 verse, 12, verse 16. Uh, we have been granted eternal life but because of his resurrection. He was the first seed that was planted. So when you plant a seed, the harvest becomes plenty. It's not, you, you're not going to reap one seed. So you plant the seed, you're going to reap a, a thousand fold. If I can put it that way. So we are the harvest that Christ, the, the seed that Christ was planted. Uh, one of, I think, one of the, the devil's stupid mistakes. So that's what I wanted to bring to your attention this uh, Good Friday that there is power in knowing Christ and knowing uh, the resurrection power, the power that resurrected him, that yes, we acknowledge uh, what happened at the cross, but beyond the cross, we need to start thinking crown family. I guess we'll touch on that some other time.